Are you a woodworker? Check out what this button does. This is a DIY TV lift cabinet and it's a super fun woodworking project. In today's video, we're gonna build this entire cabinet, but we also created a 3D design, drawings, and they're all available for download 100% for free. Here's a quick preview of that project plan. The great thing with this project plan is it's really a basic cabinet and you can dress it up and customize it to fit your design preference. And that's available for free at tvliftcabinet.com forward slash DIY. Now let's get started. I took that project plan to my local home improvement store and stocked up on some lumber. And now we're gonna head back and we're gonna start building the front face frame. So I got these two eight foot pieces of poplar and these are just gonna be used to make up the face frame. The face frame is pretty basic. You could use a harder wood if you decide to stain this. We're gonna end up painting ours white so we went with the poplar. We're gonna glue it together and then attach it with some pocket screws. So I finished the four cuts for the face frame using the poplar. It's gonna go like this. So you get that lined up right where you want it and then you use this clamp to really tighten it down and make sure that both of the surfaces are perfectly flat, which they are. You want to make sure this edge is perfect, which it is. And then when you screw it in, it'll pull it in together even tighter, but you'll know that they're both on the same plane. Okay, so with that, our face frame is complete. We have the pocket screws holding it together. It's glued. The glue's gonna dry even harder. This will be the front of it, but you're not even gonna see the front because we're gonna end up having some trim boards go over it. But so my face frame is done, and now I'm gonna start making the plywood box itself. And that starts with the side walls, which are 14 and a half wide. I'm gonna rip those down here on the table saw. So I have the bottom, the two sides, and the face frame, and now I just have to do the back. So when assembling this box, I like to use some glue and some brad nails to temporarily hold it. And then I countersink some holes and put some construction screws in to permanently hold it. All right, so we have the basic box built. Now we're gonna cut up the MDF into little three inch and three and a half inch strips. Those are gonna be the styles and the rails. It's gonna be a decorative piece. It's really gonna dress the box up nicely. So I have to cut a whole bunch of pieces of this MDF. I'm gonna use these extensions on my uh, miter saw and I'm gonna try to make a stop and then I'm gonna tighten everything down. We got these one inch brad nails. These are gonna be perfect for attaching the MDF to the side. but this thing is looking really nice. And keep in mind, I know that still, maybe it doesn't look nice to you because there's these little marks. These are all gonna get filled in with paintable uh, wood filler. So you're never gonna see these. Alright, so I filled in all my holes with a wood filler, did a light sanding. I'm going to touch this up one more time before we paint it, but I don't want to get too far because I still have to build the panel that's going to go right here. Now that panel is going to come down from the inside and then fit in here. And we're going to do something a little unique. We're going to make this reversible. So we're going to have one design on the front and then another design on the back and you can pull it out and reverse it. The reason the panel comes out, you're probably never going to need to take it out, but if you ever wanted to access the TV lift mechanism or anything in here, you could just pull this panel out. Um, be a lot easier to do that versus just reaching down in the little gap up here. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little ledge in right here, and that's gonna be so that when the um, panel slides down, it can sit on this, which is the face frame that we already built, but it's not gonna fall back behind it, so I'm gonna put a little ledge right here. Now with my ledge in place, I'm going to measure the inside of the panel, which is going to go behind these pieces here, all the way around on the bottom and on the top, so I want to measure to the inside. So we could technically just leave it like this, paint it and be done with it, but we want to do something cool on this front panel, so I'm going to make some tabs to hold it up on the top. I'm drilling some oversized holes so the tabs will be able to pivot around on the screws. Now that I have the face door piece in here nice and tight with the notches on, I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna trace, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap so I have a little bit of a reveal here on the sides. So I'm gonna use the square here to give me a little bit of a gap. This reveal will make the faux doors look more realistic on the front side of the panel. Maybe an eighth of an inch. Since I'm doing this as a reversible face plate, I'm gonna turn it around now and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to start with the simple door first, which is just looks like a standard cabinet uh, door front. And the other side is going to be a really cool design. you got to stay tuned to see how that turns out. But let's start with the basic one. And that's why I did the two marks, so I'll have a little bit of a reveal. I'm going to double check my measurements. Although this is going to get painted, one thing I wish I was more mindful of was the direction of the plywood. As you can see where I'm sanding here, it's going right to left and on the sides it's going up and down. That was a mistake on my part. I'm going to put a piece of clean, nice plywood all the way around the bottom here. It's just quarter inch, so it's going to be indented in there a little bit. I think it'll look really nice and we're going to end up painting it. You could put a piece of trim board down there. You could do anything you want with your own cabinet. Uh, to make it fit your own design style, but I'm going to use this piece of quarter inch plywood. I'm going to rip it down. I've already measured the bottom and then we're going to attach it around the bottom there. All right, the cabinet's really coming along now. Now I'm going to cut some inch and three quarter strips off of this piece of pine. It's going to get painted. You could use a better one if you wanted to. This is going to be for the trim piece that goes around the top where the cover sits on. I used glue and brad nails to hold this into place and then I countersunk some holes and used some screws. Especially where the lid is hinged, I wanted it to be extra strong but I did it all the way around. Next up I use some 3 8 stop molding. You could use 3 8 quarter round or other trim as well. I use this up against all of the styles and rails and around the top. Remember we do have an entire project plan with the cut list. The cut list however does not include the stop molding sizes. I left those out because it's important that you measure those and you're very accurate on each of those. And it depends on if you're going to cut them at a 45 or otherwise depending on the type of trim you use. So we got the control unit, we've got some hardware, a really good set of instructions, everything's packaged great. So now is the fun part, installing the TV lift mechanism in your cabinet. These are sold at tvliftcabinet.com and that'll fit perfectly in the unit 
and it'll go right to the top. You want it to be an eighth of an inch from the top. Like a glove. So I just plugged this in for the first time. It's not secured in yet. Isn't that the coolest thing ever? I'm just pushing the button on here. There's a remote that comes with it as well. But I'm doing this so I can get the bracket out of the way so I can screw the bottom in. The main thing is, you want to be about an eighth of an inch down from the top of the cabinet. We got an eighth of an inch clearance at the top. That's exactly what the directions say to do. So we're painting our cabinet white, but you could do anything you want with your own cabinet. That's the beauty of building it yourself. You could use some nicer hardwoods and stain it. You could paint it some different colors. You could really make it your own. All right, so I missed some of this getting it on camera, but we're finishing staining the rest of the um, top. So we bought this piano hinge that we're gonna use for the lid. For the top lid, I used an edge glued piece of pine, but I would recommend using a nicer hardwood. Really cool design. There's um, an arch right here. So it's not just flat hitting wood, it's actually gradually coming down. And then the whole back of this has a material on it that's fuzzy, so it's not rubbing metal on wood. Let's see. Blend that way, put that way. All right, so we have the basic cabinet built. This thing's so cool, it never gets old pushing this button. Now I'm gonna pull our front panel out and I'm gonna reverse it and I'm gonna put a really cool design on the back. One thing I didn't get in the video was I added some legs to each corner on the bottom. I used some four by fours and I cut them about an inch and a half high and then I ran the cord through the bottom. Optionally, you could also run the cord through the back of the cabinet. So this part of the project was really fun. We're designing the inside part of the panel. We live out in the woods on a 20 acre homestead, so we're trying to go with sort of a traditional design on the front that you saw already, and a more rustic, kind of opposing design on the inside. That way we can flip the cover around and have two distinct designs. Plus it's gonna be pretty fun to do this rustic version, as you'll see here. Luckily my wife Jen is into crafting and she has a Cricut machine and she helped me cut these out in vinyl. Quick word before I cut out this design with my jigsaw. Most people don't have a Cricut machine and can't do vinyl like this. You could just freehand it. You could find a picture on Google Images and maybe print out a whole bunch of separate sheets of just regular standard size paper and then use some adhesive and stick it to the board and then maybe cut it out with an X-Acto knife to get you that exact shape. So there's lots of different ways you could do it. I like this vinyl though because it gives me a really good idea what the sign's going to look like. I'm also tracing around the vinyl with a pencil just in case my jigsaw tears up the vinyl. I did of course have to drill a pilot hole to get the jigsaw blade in 
And then I had to drill several other holes for the really tight corners that I couldn't make with the jigsaw. But overall this worked pretty well and for the most part the vinyl stuck in place without getting all torn up. I could save him for another sign. So these are just pine boards. I'm staining this the same color as the lid. Again, it's kind of a rustic look. If you wanted a nicer, more modern design, I'd definitely go with a harder wood instead of the pine. All right, this is exciting. Our TV lift cabinet build is completed. We just have to put the TV in, as you can see. But I wanted to test out and show you what the different um, front panels look like. So this is the standard front panel that you've all seen already. And then we designed the Mama Bear Baby Bear one, which I can currently see on the inside. So we're going to flip it around and you're going to be able to see the other side. So let's take a look. And there you have the Mama Bear Baby Bear front panel design. Besides this remote, it also comes with this really cool app. Check this out. So there you have it. That's our TV lift cabinet project. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching and if you are interested in building this style cabinet, head on over to tvliftcabinet.com forward slash DIY and download this complete project plan I created along with 3D designs. It's a free download. Get it today. Thanks for watching.